Hey guys, I'm a verified educator at an academy and along with that I'm also teaching live at an academy plus to access my live classes you can take an academy plus subscription now an academy plus offers some interesting features apart from live classes which include detailed and complete explanation of a particular course then there you have problem a discussion for self-evaluation you can also watch recorded version of the class in case if you miss out any live session you have regular doubt clearing sessions for doubt clearing and to clarify all your problems you also get access to the whatsapp group to clear and discuss problem among the other plus students now if you have found these features interesting and want to join an academy plus i'll recommend you to use my referral code that is n underscore huda to get 10 percent discount on the subscription fee now that's all about an academy plus let's continue with our video all right so we'll talk about this question over here and this was again asked for two marks in csi june 2019 it says that uh, the total number of symmetry elements in diborane molecule okay so they are talking about diborane molecule so before going into that you should know the structure of diborane so diborane has two boron molecule two boron atoms attached with each other through uh, hydrogen uh, through three center two electron bonds and the other two hydrogen are off plane means they are not on the same plane so it's something like this okay so you draw the molecule in this way that is hydrogen and this hydrogen okay so this this is how the molecule looks like now where this particular bonds are on the plane these four bonds whereas this and this bond are above the plane and this and this bond are below the plane okay so if you don't know about the structure of it i'll suggest you to uh, search it on google and just three see the three dimensional structure of it okay um, so there is a website called chemtube 3d so you'll be getting uh, the three dimensional image of that and you can also rotate it to understand the symmetry of this particular molecule fine so the point group in this particular molecule uh, you all know are aware about that right i think because it will have um, it will have three c2 axis one primary and the two will be considered as sec secondary axis and then you will be having like a horizontal plane will be there then vertical planes will be there also okay so uh, the point groups come uh, of this molecule comes out to be uh, d2h okay so d2h is the point group of this molecule so if you don't know how to find out point group i have made a de uh, like dedicated video for that i have already made it like long back if you have not watched that i'll suggest you to watch it in the i button over here i'll just attach that video over here okay so if this is the point group let me just give you a few information that if you have point group like cnv or cnh okay if this is the condition if this is the kind of point group which you have so total number of symmetry elements or elements of symmetry are given by formula 2n okay so 2n is the number of symmetry okay so the number of symmetry is given by this particular formula whereas if your molecule has a uh, like it has a, a d n h or d n d type of point group in that case your number of symmetry element is given by 4n so 4n is the number of symmetry so if you don't know this i think you should remember these two values okay so for c uh, group of c point group c and v or cnh you have to write like the number of symmetry is given by 2n uh, for dnh or dnd your point group is given by 4n so that makes the things very easy now you can write just write down like uh, you have the value of n will be taken from here so n is 2 over here right you can easily see that n is 2 so the number of uh, symmetry elements will be given by 2 into like 4n right so 4n means uh, 4 into 2 that gives you 8 so 8 is the number of symmetry elements over here all right so this is how you can find out uh, the number of symmetry elements in this particular condition okay so you have two sigma uh, v in this particular molecule okay so and you have uh, two s2 molecules as well okay so that sorry one uh, one s2 mol uh, and one identity so these are the uh, eight symmetry operations in this particular uh, like these are the eight elements of symmetry in this particular molecule so this is how this question has to be done now let's go to the next all right so we'll talk about this particular question over here and uh, this was asked for four marks in csir june 2019 exam okay 
and it was quite a simple question uh, like there are many ways in which you can solve this one uh, but i'll tell you the best way the easiest and the best way okay that how you can approach towards this kind of question first of all this is given that the pi orbital is given to you in this way so the pi orbital let me just write down it in this way so pi orbital i'm just like the molecular orbital i'm just representing it as psi over here okay so psi it is like p1 plus p2 minus p3 minus p4 so that's how it is given now if you look upon to over here so how many nodes are there okay so first of all find out the nodes how many nodes are there so there is just one node because the sign is changing only once okay you can see that only here this sign is getting changed from plus it is getting changed into minus so number of nodes you can easily find out with the help of like just by looking that how many times the sign is getting changed so since one time it is getting changed so that's why node is one so if there is one node first of all just let's make uh, this particular wave function okay since it is cis butadiene so let me just make it so this will be like this okay so it will look something like this let me just draw these orbitals also so these orbitals will be like this and since it is a cis butadiene so let's say if this is i am just shading the positive sides so these are the plus sign so here you will have one node and these will be like this okay so this is how the molecular orbital of cis this is for cis butadiene okay so this is cis butadiene and that's how it will look now you just have to see that uh, like around these particular operations like identity operation then you have c2 operation then you have sigma v and then you have sigma v dash so there are two sigma v so like uh, and it's a c2v point uh, character table of c2v point group right so you just have to see that around these uh, symmetry operations how does this particular orbitals will look so before going into that there are two orbitals uh, like sorry there are two sigma v one is sigma v and one is sigma v dash so remember whenever we uh, we have two uh, like uh, vertical plane so the one which is uh, which contains the molecule okay or the molecular plane uh, is given more priority okay so this sigma v will correspond to the molecular plane whereas this sigma v dash will be the plane perpendicular to the molecular axis okay that means what that means if you have butadiene that is ch2 uh, yeah, so this will be something like this ch2 ch ch ch2 okay so this is like this so your uh, sigma v is the plane which is which contains this molecule okay so this is sigma v and sigma v dash is the plane perpendicular to the uh, to the plane of this okay so this will be like this so this perpendicular plane is sigma v dash so just you need to know about the basics of uh, uh, like um, group theory to go with that and i have already made a lot of videos on group theory so you can watch them I'll attach them over here in the i button so you can just click on that i button and watch those videos out okay now coming back to the question over here so we have cis butadiene just look, let's look upon that what axis we will be having so you will be having a c2 axis okay now uh, if you if you see this particular molecule the c2 axis will pass through the molecule like this okay so this is your c2 axis passing through the molecule where this c1 and c like c a and c a will replace each other c b and c b will replace each other if you rotate this molecule by 180 degrees right so now in this uh, now that was a molecule okay this was the molecule and here i have represented the lobes so this is the side view of the same molecule the molecule or this molecule has been represented from the side uh, like this is the just the side view of that so from where the c2 axis will pass so the c2 axis will pass through this particular thing okay so it will pass through this particular point so that's the c2 axis you have now just look up onto this if you rotate it along c2 axis that means you are rotating the molecule in this way okay so if you rotate so what will happen that this lobe uh, will uh, like replace this one and this one will replace this one right so there will be uh, like these diagonal lobes will interchange themselves similarly this one will replace this one and this lobe will replace this one so basically you will be having a symmetrical molecule uh, when you apply this c2 axis so molecule remains symmetrical whenever you uh, like whenever you do a particular symmetry operation and you get a symmetrical result in that case we say we write it down we express it as one okay so that means around c2 okay let me just write down all this symmetry operation at a place in the corner so we have identity we have c2 we have sigma v and we have sigma v dash 
so right now ident for identity you are not doing anything to the molecule so that you have to write down one for c2 we have just seen that the molecule remains symmetrical so that's why i have written one over here all right now next is the molecular plane now if you look upon to the molecular plane uh, of the molecule in this if you look so this sigma v was the molecular plane which contains the molecule now if you see the orbitals which i have made so where is your molecule molecule lies on this line right this line which i'm just darkening right now so your molecule lies on this line so that means what where is your molecular plane so your molecular plane is not nowhere but this this particular plane is your molecular plane okay this is molecular plane which will contain this 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 and this carbon these four carbons will be contained on it so and these lobes will be above and below this this particular molecular plane okay so this is just this molecular plane uh, these lobes will be above and below this particular molecular plane so that's what you have to see now is the molecule symmetrical around it so no just you can see that the above side you have a positive loop below you have negative loop so they are not symmetrical similarly here similarly it goes here also okay and similar thing goes here so on the top above of this molecular plane you have different uh, like sign of that loop and below side you have different sign so around this molecular plane you will have minus one okay so you'll be getting minus one around this uh, molecular plane okay so this was your molecular plane so you got minus one because of that now let's look upon uh, the sigma v dash sigma v dash was this plane which was perpendicular to the molecular plane in this if i want to show that so it will be shown like this okay so let me just show this so that will pass through sorry yeah so this will pass through the molecule in this way okay so this will pass through like this so this carbon will be reflected by this carbon this carbon will be reflected by this carbon in this particular uh, plane okay so this is the perpendicular plane or the vertical plane so yeah so you can see this lobe is positive but in front of that in the reflection side you are getting negative lobe similarly negative and negative lobe so that's me that means what that uh, it's not symmetrical right around this particular red colored plane which i've just drawn this lobes are not symmetrical so again you have minus one so now you just look upon to the character table that in which like what is the molecular term in front of these characters one one minus one minus one so one one minus one minus one you got for a2 so the correct answer for this question will be a2 okay so that's how you have to do this was very simple question and very easy one okay so you just have to uh, like whenever a question will be asked although over here it was quite simple because uh, many many people have approached this question in this way that if you have plus plus minus minus sign okay this is just another way although this page which i'm just which i'm just telling is not applicable everywhere but yet many students have done in this way so i'm just telling you that you should know all the ways right that all the methods how to solve that question so if it is given like uh, yeah so if you have like plus plus minus minus for the loops you just have to look in the character table where it is plus plus minus minus and then also they got the answer but they were lucky enough to get the answer like that it will not be always like this okay so always it's not necessary that you will get the same condition so the way which i have explained the whole question you have to always go with that and then your answer will be 100 percent correct okay so that's for this particular question let's take the next question now this is one of the very easy question which was asked from group theory and it was again asked for four marks okay this was asked for four marks in csi june 2019 exam and i'll tell you that how you can do this question very easily i hope that this kind of question you already know how to do uh, although if you don't know i'll attach a video over here you can just click on the i button and watch that video in there i have explained these things in detail okay so let's talk about the question first of all it says that the number of times a1 representation appears in the uh, representation the reducible representation lambda of c2v point group is given to you okay so this is this is the representation given to you or you can say this is reducible representation and they are asking that about a1 okay so for that you need a character table of c2v okay so because in just previous question the character table was given in the question paper so that's why they were like they were assuming that you can just look upon to the previous question um, and you can just find out the c2v character table so i'll just bring that character table over here uh, just to make sure that you guys like just to show you guys right all right so now you can see that this is the character table uh, for 
uh, your C to B point group and it was just given a quotient before this okay so no need to worry uh, always in CSI net they will be giving you character table if the question will be asked regarding that so now they are asking about a1 uh, representation so what you have to do how to do this kind of question so it's very very simple to do uh, it's just the method of finding out irreducible representation since over here they are just asking about a1 so i'll just do for a1 so it's like 1 upon h h is your uh, like uh, the order of the point group so over here your order is 4 so 1 by 4 and now you have to just write down you have to just multiply these things like these irreducible represent sorry these reducible terms with the characters okay and also if you have any coefficient over here like let's say if you have 2c2 then you have to multiply 2 with 1 and then this one okay so since we don't have any coefficient luckily over here so we don't have to go for that uh, you just have to multiply this with this so just do that so it will be 3 into 1 plus now this 1 into 1 okay so this will be like 1 into 1 plus this 1 into this one okay we are just looking upon a1 so that's why we just have to look upon to that so 1 into 1 plus this 3 into 1 so this will be like 3 into 1 so how much you will get in the bracket so you'll get 4 it will be like 3 plus 1 plus 1 plus 3 so it will be 8 right 3 plus 1 is 4 plus 4 is 8 so when you cancel that out you'll get 2 so answer is quite simple it's option 2 okay these kind of questions you should be very good at solving these questions and there are a lot of chances that these questions will be repeated many times they have been repeated and they can be asked again in the exam so that's all for this video guys i hope i have covered all the questions from group theory uh, from your uh, june 2019 exam i hope it was clear to you guys i hope you guys understood it well if you guys have any doubt you can ask me in the comment section below if you are new to this channel subscribe to this channel like this video and i'll see you guys in the next one thank you so much for watching have a great day bye bye